So what's good TMG fam, it's your boy L and I'm back with another reaction man, how y'all feel, welcome back to the channel, salute. Now listen, we are back with part 2 of the top 10 times the judge lost control. Alright, this is part 2. Alright, so listen, real quick before we get into that man, I actually have it pulled up. Shout outs to OP Reroll, shout outs to you man, your comment was... I used to be a deputy, he said, and I, I said the following more than once to folks. Now, this guy used to be a deputy. He tells people, look, I'm just the cops. You can decide to ignore me and do your own thing, but never cross a judge. Now, this is coming from a cop, right? A cop used to be a cop. He said, I can inconvenience you and put you in jail for a short period. A judge can end your freedom. Never cross them, bro. Now, when you have a cop telling you that, bro, he kind of settle in, hit a little harder, hit a little different. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, I agree, bro. Like, it's just certain people. I just, I keep my little comments to myself. You know what I'm saying? Because they can make things a lot worse for me. And a judge being one of them. Like, he just has certain powers that way. You, you saw the girl in the courtroom the, the last video. She reacted. He reacted. She reacted. He reacted. She reacted again. He reacted this time and really put the nail in the car. The game for 30 days, bro. And some people was like, oh, okay, it's just 30 days. Really? Nah, man, I'm not trying to give any of my, my time is valuable enough, bro. I ain't trying to give it to nobody. Give it away. No, no. I need all my time. I need all of it. All right. So. Again, y'all, this is part two. Let's go. Hello and welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate, and today we're talking about the top 10 times the judge lost control, part two. Judges, mad lads, all of them. Some of them ladies, too. Before we get into it, I just want to ask you guys, have you ever seen a judge in real life? Or have you got any crazy court stories you want to share with me? Let me know in the comments section. Do I have any judge stories? I've only had one. I probably only had one judge who almost tried to arrest me, uh, put me in jail. Um, but it was like just it, it wasn't I wasn't even there. I, I put it to you this way. Right. When I was younger. Right. And my parents were going through their divorce. Um, it was it was like it kind of got to the point where it was becoming like a nasty breakup sit, split situation between the two of them. And I told them both. You know what I'm saying? I was probably what, maybe me and Queen was together. So I was a little older. I was older when they was going through it. How old was I? I can't remember. I have to go back and ask Queen. But nonetheless, I told them I don't want to be in the middle of it. I don't want to be in the middle of, of y'all's what y'all going through, man. You know what I'm saying? I love you both to death. I don't want to have to feel like I have to choose sides between my parents. Bro, don't put me in that place. Please don't put me in that place. I kept telling them, please. They ignored me. They ignored me. So when we was all told we had to come to court for it, the judge asked some question for everybody who's here, stand up, who's going, who has something to testify and say, I didn't stand up. And the judge said something to me and I just didn't, I, I was just like, I'm not, I'm not going to cooperate. Judge was like, you do realize you're such, such. And I just repeated, I'm not going to cooperate. I told them I did not want to be in the middle of this. And the judge was like, well, then you will be in contempt of court, such and such. And you go, you'll go to jail for such and such. And the bailiffs had already started coming my way with their handcuffs out. And then my family, my parents finally realized that I was dead serious on the fact that I was not going to choose sides. I was not going to do that. And they quickly turned to the judge, asked, could they speak to the judge? They spoke to the judge. And then they came and got me and I was, I was released to go. And I just told them, man, don't put me in that. I don't want to be in that situation. And it was probably dumb on my part when looking back at it, doing, being young and dumb. But I just didn't want to choose sides between my parents. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, that's neither here nor there, man. Sorry, I got, I, I, 
I let y'all into a little more of my life. Just look at it that way. Let's get back to the video though. Down below. Also, if you guys want to connect with me on social media, there's a link to my Instagram in the description box. Okay, let's start things with some screaming, shall we? At number 10, we have Judge Milan. Judge Milan was fiery from the very beginning in this clip from the People's Court. The judge is kind of cagey to both the plaintiff and the defendant, accusing the defendant of lying. The sassy judge loses it when the defendant kicks her swinging court door. To be honest, I don't really know what's going on, but this was her reaction. There she go again. Kick my car too. Who's gonna pay oh, for the Oh, you know what? He just kicked See my door. I mean? Never mind. I changed That's my why. mind. Yeah, please. Actually, cause That's exactly the way. My favorite part was where she absolutely loses it, though. It has to be this bit. A heck out of my courtroom now! Excellent. Out! Oh. Out! Oh. I told you we were going to get locked up here. Oh, Lord. Above. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Therefore, I find in your face. She ends the tirade by saying, oh, Lord, and she bangs her hammer and sighs. So it sounds like Buddy was going to make it out of there and probably not have to pay whatever this dude was asking him to pay. But you just let your emotions get the best of you, bro, in the wrong time. In the wrong time, bro. The episode aired in September 2017 and was quite the talking point. Another lady judge who had zero chill, we have Judge Merrilee Ehrlich at number 9. In April 2018, Florida Judge Merrilee Ehrlich snapped. She snapped so hard in the face of a sick woman, she lost her job. Sandra Twiggs appeared in court on domestic violence charges and was suffering from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Ehrlich had no time for her sickness, and when the woman complained of needing breathing treatment, the judge responded, I'm not here to talk about your breathing treatment. When Ehrlich released Twiggs, she said, you have to arrange for someone to carry you if you cannot get out of here yourself. Many people agree that she was like totally unprofessional and very unnecessary. A video of the judge's behavior was made public, and in it, we see her outbursts. Twiggs was reportedly very distressed about the way she was treated. She died in her sleep a few days later. Broward Chief Administ- Oh, just like the worst sequence of events for that judge, bro. Oh, oh. Mr. Tiff Judge. You know they gonna tie that to her. You know they gonna tie that to her. She stressed out. You sent her over the top. She died, Judge. Whew, that judge. She died in her sleep a few days later. Broward Chief Administrative Judge Jack Tutter said, Judge Ehrlich won't return to the courthouse due to her conduct. He said that she would retire over the summer. Coming in at number eight, we have Magistrate Jennifer Betts. Jennifer Betts is pretty well known in Sydney for her fierce courtroom antics. The magistrate was on the job for 17 years, but one of her cases brought her rude behavior to light. Betts was presiding over a case in which an 18-year-old girl, Amy Cooper, was caught speeding. When the teenager was trying to explain what happened, Betts reportedly said, shut your mouth. She said, shut your mouth because I don't think it's going to do any good. Shut up, please. I'm going to talk to you now and you listen hard. Miss Cooper's lawyer said that Judge Betts' conduct could only and fairly be described as domineering and bullying behavior. When rep Commanded, Jennifer said that the trials of life put her under too much pressure and she was very depressed. Her outburst wasn't caught on camera, but her own trial was. Coming in at number seven, we have Judge John Cowlin. Being a judge must actually be pretty hard sometimes. Not everyone you meet will be an unscrupulous character, but some of the people that come through your door are likely to be very challenging. That's, I guess, to put it nicely as well. Irish Judge John Cowlin of Nass District in Kildare had zero chill when it came to hearing a case about a defendant who drove without a license. Sean Byrne was already a repeat offender with 14 previous convictions. The man drove a tractor as part of his job. Jeez. 14 previous convictions. Good gosh. Like, come on, man. I think some people just go to, just love getting arrested and going to court. I, I just think they do, man. Some people just don't care. <laughs> Peter Fender with 14 previous convictions. The man drove a tractor as part of his job and foolishly was driving uninsured. Ben's defense solicitor described the man as hardworking and a responsible father, but Judge Cowlin simply responded, he's a gobshite, and that's the nicest thing I can say about him. The so-called gobshite was handed a six-year driving ban and a fine of 500 euros. I kind of find it pretty funny. Coming in at number six, we have Judge Ralph Erickson. Hey, you get, after somebody re repeatedly comes to the courtroom 14 times, yeah, you, you, 
you you got the right to go off on him, Judge. I ain't even mad at you for that, though. Because obviously what you're doing clearly isn't getting to him. Talking to him nicely, giving him second chances. That ain't working, bro. You got to kick some realness to him at this point. You got to talk to him like a little kid. You got to go off. You got to chest chastise him different. Judge Ralph Erickson got scolded by a state Supreme Court in Florida for years of bullish and unprofessional behavior. In his reprimanding, it was voiced that Judge Erickson penalizes people for not understanding how court works and he was improperly jailing people who failed on their court cost payments. The Supreme Court reprimanded him for his unduly rigid processes and accused him of making it too hard for domestic violence victims to seek protection. In the hearing, the Supreme Court showed a clip of one of his outbursts in 2006. You can watch it. Has a hard time hearing you. And you heard what I said so far. It was that exchange that started all this in 2006. He just doesn't seem like a very nice guy. Coming into number five, we have Judge Jerry Collins. Judge Jerry Collins was a real piece of work. She was nasty, and I mean really nasty, to a domestic abuse victim, which basically is not what a domestic abuse victim needs. The shocking events transpired in 2015 when Judge Collins berated a woman who didn't make it to a court hearing because of the anxiety and depression she suffered since parting with her attacker. The judge ignores the woman's tears and holds her in contempt of court. She jails her for three days. A video of the tirade was posted on YouTube, and it's actually pretty sad to watch. It's been seen over 130,000 times, and the comments section is not forgiving to the judge. This is one of the worst bits for me. I just, my anxiety, and I'm just... You think you're gonna have anxiety now? <laughs> you haven't even seen anxiety. And then we have this. Please, please. You should have showed up, and you should have showed up. I have a one-year-old son, and I'm trying to take care of him by myself. I'm begging you, please, please don't. Please, please, please. I've already issued my order. This was just Dang. That's just cold-blooded, bro. That's just cold-blooded, man. She's already a domestic abuse victim. You gotta be a little bit more. I get it. I get it because we can't sit here and act like some people don't use the whole, you know, victim thing and they they use it not for good. You know what I mean? They try to use that, but I don't think she was genuinely using it. I, I don't know. Just, and I'm just judging based on a small clip that we just saw. You know, I get it. You know, judges probably see a lot of people throughout the day who try to use certain tactics and different things. And she probably see a lot of people crying so that doesn't phase her. And the whole victim thing, people try to use sometimes and use it as an advantage. But you, you can't just base everybody off of past idiots and, and imbeciles and, and different dummies and who who just have no shame. This This girl... From what I saw, the little tiny clip I, I see, I, I, I didn't get that feel, but I don't know what the judge is feeling. But, bro, the judge, I know they is tearing up in that comment section of that video, bro, because she just came off very, very just cold, cold. This is actually really heartbreaking to watch. The girl pleads that she has a one-year-old son to look after and the judge just doesn't seem to care. After the footage was shared, Judge Collins found herself at the mercy of the Florida Supreme Court, who told her that she violated the state's code of judicial conduct. Chief Justice George Labarger said Collins berated and belittled a victim of domestic violence. He said, I cannot emphasize how intolerable your behavior was in this case. Now, the only punishment that the judge received was being publicly reprimanded. Coming in at number four, we have Judge Queena Lillard. I don't actually really feel like this judge unduly lost it. I would be really angry if someone was laughing during a death trial too. Judge Queena Lillard had two people removed from court for speaking and laughing before Amanda Kosal was sentenced for a DUI that killed a 31-year-old man. While the defendant was somber, her friends and family at the hearing were causing chaos and drama when they were being disruptive, and Judge Lillard was having absolutely none of it, and you know what? Good on her. She already threw out one member of the gallery and was discussing how appalling it was that anyone could laugh and smile when a person had died. She then had to throw out another woman, and she said, 
was sitting there smiling and laughing. Yeah, you can go too. She then had the woman arrested and thrown in jail for 93 days, which is three months. She implored the rest of the courtroom to try it. Coming in at number three, we have Judge Jay Hurley. Judge John J. Hurley had absolutely no time for this defense attorney's line of argument. The Fort Lauderdale judge accused public defender Dale Miller of poisoning a case when he suggested that race was the main motivation for a 26-year-old man to hide under a dock wearing a gun holster. In the 2015 trial, Miller said, Your Honor, in light of what's happening in this country with unarmed black men being killed by police, him running from shots being fired is very reasonable. This was Hurley's initial response. Look. That is not appropriate in this case. That's not there. I'm not going to let you poison this case with bringing in something that has nothing to do with it. He then sets the bond at $100,000 on two counts. He gets so heated that he then says he needs to take a break. Coming in at number two, we have Noel Cannon, who said that she would castrate a police officer. Chill out, Noel. This is... <laughs> that is too far. I don't... Yeah, that's too far. Don't be threatening to castrate me, fam. No. No, you take no, 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 no. I'd have, I'd have lost it too, bro. Me and her would have went back and forth. Is kind of hilarious on some levels, I have to admit. This judge was pretty spirited in the 70s and it landed her in hot water. Judge Noel Cannon was rather sexistly nicknamed the miniskirt judge because it was the 70s and successful females scared men way more than they do now, so they had to constantly allude to the fact that she was a woman before they'd let her do her job. Anyway, Judge Cannon was on her way to court and was running late when she was beeping at traffic. Her beeping got her pulled over by a police officer who said, you know what, honey, stop honking. When she eventually arrived at court, she said to the bailiff, God damn, get that son of a bitch here. Find that bastard. I'm not going to start court until that son of a bitch is here. She then threatened the police officer saying, when I find him, I'm going to cut off his balls and hang them over my bench. I'm going to castrate. Jesus. Uh, uh, Lorena Bobbitt's sister. Uh, it gotta be, she got to be related. Now that's somebody taking that job, bro, and you know what I mean, taking that robe. They they put that they don that robe, man, and go straight to their head. They think they're invincible. They can do anything to anybody. She wrong for that. Great him. I'm gonna give him a vasectomy with a 38. As much as I'm sure we can all enjoy her spirit, her outburst was somewhat inappropriate. The police officer found out about it and it led to all kinds of trouble. She was suspended. It seems that this judge was also prone to bringing her pet chihuahua to court and sometimes a mechanical canary. What? Finally, at number one, we have this very, very famous vulgar exchange. This is a very strange case indeed and one that was even parodied in Rick and Morty. In June 2016, a superior court judge in Rome, Georgia, absolutely lost it at a defendant and he threatened him. Denver Fenton Allen threatened to kill Judge Durham's family. The defendant, who was already serving time for a previous conviction, stood accused of beating his fellow inmate to death in Floyd County Jail in 2015. Allen said to Judge Durham, I'll cut your children up into pieces. I'll knock their brains out with a effing hammer. I'll feed them to you. He kept going. He said, the babies will be going, Daddy, Daddy, help me. This is just very, very grim. When the judge found the defendant guilty of contempt of court, Allen said that he didn't care. The judge then sentenced him to another 20 days for contempt if he said anything else. Of course, he told the judge to F off and the whole thing snowballed until basically Judge Durham had given him an extra 20 years in jail. The judge seemed to lose it at Allen when he said, you know, you look like a queer. I know all the inmates love you to death. I'll bet everyone's enjoying effing your glass. Except he didn't say glass, did he? Whoa. Whoa. Oh, here's the exchange right here, Mr. Allen. Go blank yourself. I'm through here. Are y'all done? The court. I'm finding, I'm finding you in contempt of court, Mr. Allen. I don't care. The court. I know you don't. And I sentence you to 20 days for that. And if you say anything else, I'm going to add 20 days for everything, Mr. Allen. Blank you. The court, 40 days. Mr. Allen, blank you again. The court, 60. Mr. Allen, go blank yourself. The court, a year. Mr. Allen, your mama. The court, 10 years. Mr. Allen, blank my blank. The court, you know something? This is going to be an interesting trial. Mr. Allen, oh yeah? The court, oh yeah. Mr. Allen, you're not supposed to smile in court. You know that if you smile, the court, I can smile anytime I want. Mr. Allen, it's a violation. Yo, what is wrong with this dude?
It was obviously quite inappropriate for a judge to say, and I know that he'd been threatened, but he couldn't get away with that. The court transcript is actually quite the read. Judge Darren was... All right, let me go back. He couldn't get away with that. The court transcript is actually... There it goes. The court. Of course. You know, you look like a blank. Can't say that word. <laughs> Mr. Allen, well, okay. So now you're calling me a blank in the courthouse. The court. I didn't call you one. I said you look like one. Mr. Allen, you're yelling. The court. Do you understand the English language? Mr. Allen, wait. You're yelling. You're laughing. The court. Do you understand the English language? Mr. Allen, this is, this, this is kangaroo court, sir. The court. Do you know what? Do you, you know what? No, we're not in Australia. Mr. Allen, I mean, if you want to blank my blank, you can do it any time now. We can, oh, the court, oh, Mr. Allen, get this court order. The court, you're, you're so smart. Mr. Allen, do you want to have court order this? The court, you're so funny. You're so cute. Mr. Allen, can we get court order to get my blank, sir? The court, you're so cute. I know all the inmates just love you to death, Mr. Allen. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> While this would have been greatly entertaining if I was there when I got done, I'd be like, yo, that judge is in the highway. He let his emotions get the best of him. He kept feeding into him. Pretty much the defendant, the dude, he got to the judge. You can't let that happen. We say the same thing about cops. You know, they got to have thick skin. They got to be able to withstand the pressure. You know what I'm saying? When you're doing that badge, you, it's a lot you have to take it on, take it and, and let roll down your roll down your back or whatever, whatever the saying is. The same applies to a judge, bro. He could not get drawn out of character. He had to maintain professionalism and he let him get under his skin and bring him out of character. Maybe that was his character. I don't know. But yeah, he, he can't let this happen. Quite the read. Judge Durham was criticized for his behavior, although he was not severely punished. Okay, so that was the top 10 times the judge lost control part two. What? That's crazy, bro. Yeah, of course, you know, he probably had friends in high places. So he was probably making a few phone calls. They was like, all right, just probably a publicly apologize and we'll let you slide. You don't have a history or anything like that. But he let Buddy get to him, bro. That transcript was crazy. You hear me? <laughs> crazy. Ah, that was dope. But uh, anyway, man, y'all get at me in the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought of this, man. The top 10 times the judge lost control. And uh, stick around and stay tuned, man, until the next reaction. I'm gone. Peace.